The Chocolate Touch by Patrick Catling. Chapter 1. Most of the time, John Midas was a very nice boy. Every now and then, of course, he broke a rule, such as the rule against pretending to be a tiger when his sister Mary was supposed to be getting to sleep. Generally speaking, however, he behaved very well. He should have behaved better. He lived in a comfortable house, surrounded by a green lawn and wide-spreading shade trees that were suitable for climbing. His mother was gentle as well as practical. His father, when he didn't have to hurry to town, spent hours telling John interesting things about baseball, beetles, birds' nests, boats, brigands, and butterflies. John went to school and liked it. His teacher, Miss Plimsoll, was fairly easy to get along with, as long as he did careful work. He had received a new, shiny golden trumpet and music lessons as a going-to-school present. Mrs. Quaver, the music teacher, had soon agreed to let him play small parts, a few notes at a time, with the school orchestra. Finally, there was Susan Buttercup, who was in his class. Susan had soft yellow curls, round pink cheeks, blue eyes, and one of the best collections of marbles in the neighborhood. John should have been completely well-behaved, but he wasn't. He had one bad fault. He was a pig about candy. Boiled candy, cotton candy, licorice, all sorts, old-fashioned toffee, candied orange and lemon slices, cracker jack, jelly beans, fudge, black currant lozenges for ticklish throats, nougat, marron glaces, acid drops, peppermint sticks, lollipops, marshmallows, and, above all, chocolates. He devoured them all. While other boys and girls spent their money on model airplanes, magazines, skipping ropes, and pet lizards, John studied the candy counters. All his money went on candy, and all his candy went to himself. He never shared it. John Midas was candy mad. At lunch one Saturday, Mrs. Midas noticed a couple of little red spots on the end of John's nose. Look, she said to Mr. Midas. John has spots. Mr. Midas leaned forward to look at them. He gravely shook his head and clicked his tongue. John tried to look too, but it is very difficult to see the end of your own nose without a mirror unless you happen to be an elephant with a long nose that you can bend double. When John tried to look at the end of his nose, first with one eye and then with the other and then with both together, all that he could see was a pink blur. Besides, trying to look at something so close made his eyes ache. I can't see any spots, mother, John said. Well, I can, Mr. Midas said. Just because you don't see a thing doesn't always mean it isn't there. Try feeling the end of your nose with your finger. John rubbed his finger over the tip of his nose. It felt a bit rough. It may be measles, Mrs. Midas said anxiously. She placed her hand on John's forehead to feel whether he was warmer than usual. But I don't think that he has a temperature, she decided. I suspect John has been eating too much candy again, Mr. Midas said. Have you been eating candy this morning, John? Some, John admitted. What, Mr. Midas asked? Well, John replied, well, I had a few cream delights. Susan gave them to me. Anything else, Mr. Midas asked? A little toffee crunch, John said. And what else, Mr. Midas asked, beginning to look cross. John's ears grew red. He knew he wasn't supposed to eat candy before meals. Uh, only, er, oh, hardly anything else, he said. John, Mr. Midas said, and his son recognized the tone. It meant that John had to tell everything. It turned out that John had been around to see most of his friends and had managed to get candy from nearly all of them. The list he recited was a long one. No wonder you have spots, Mr. Midas commented at last. I think we'd better take John to see Dr. Cranium. 
he said to Mrs. Midas. Dr. Cranium was a tall, thin man with a bald head and a gray mustache. He looked through his glasses at John and said, Hmm, he eats lots of candy, Mr. Midas said. He hasn't been eating his meals properly, Mrs. Midas said. That's just what I thought, Dr. Cranium said. I can tell by looking at him that he eats much too much candy. The doctor shone a little electric light into John's right ear. Then he shone it into John's left ear. Then he shone it into John's nose. He told John to open wide and say, ah. Then he shone the light into John's mouth. Much too much candy. Gracious me, he seems to be full of candy. He told John to sit down and relax. Then he picked up a small rubber-headed hammer and gave John a light tap on the right knee, just below the joint. John's foot gave a weak kick. John giggled. It's nothing to laugh about, Mr. Midas said. No, John, the doctor reproved him. A healthy little boy who didn't eat too much candy would kick harder than that. I'm sorry, John said politely, but I can kick harder if you want me to. He gave a sudden high kick, which knocked the hammer out of Dr. Cranium's hand. It landed on its rubber head and bounced across the room. John, exclaimed Mrs. Midas. I'm so sorry, Dr. Cranium. John, tell the doctor you're sorry for kicking his hammer. I'm sorry I kicked your hammer, John said. I would recommend less candy, Dr. Cranium told Mr. and Mrs. Midas. An upset stomach can lead to all sorts of complications. On the way home, Mrs. Midas tried to explain to John what she thought the doctor meant by complications. You see, she said, if you put too much of one kind of food in your stomach and not enough of other kinds, it is bad for your whole body because different parts of your body need different kinds of food. Do you understand? I think so, John said. You've been eating so much sweet stuff, Mr. Midas added that there isn't room for eggs and meat and milk and bread and spinach and apples and fish and bananas and all the other things you're supposed to have to make you grow big and strong. I like bananas, John said, especially in thin slices covered with chocolate. They're called banana surprises. Mr. Midas looked at Mrs. Midas and Mrs. Midas looked at Mr. Midas. They both shrugged their shoulders. Sometimes it was hard to make John understand things. At home, while Mrs. Midas was busy in the kitchen, Mr. Midas continued to reason with John. You mean you'd rather eat candy than anything else, and chocolate rather than any other kind of candy? Mr. Midas asked. Yes, John assured him. Oh, yes. Don't you think there's a such thing as enough? Mr. Midas persisted. Don't you think that things are best in their places? I mean, don't you think there's a time for spaghetti and a time for roast beef and even a time for pickled herring and garlic toast, as well as a time for chocolate? Or would you rather have chocolate all the time? Chocolate all the time, John replied emphatically. Chocolate's best, that's all. Other things are just food, but chocolate's chocolate. Chocolate. I think I understand, Mr. Midas broke in sharply. Very well, he took a deep breath and went on. John, he said, if you can't understand what sort of diet is really best for you, can't you at least get it in your head that you make your mother very unhappy when you eat so much candy that you can't eat anything else? The conversation always seemed to get around to the effect of John's candy eating on John's mother. John couldn't see how it could possibly do her any harm if he ate candy. He sat silent for a moment. Then he said, may I go out and play, please, Daddy? 